Hey guys and welcome to another video. So we're here at the Women's and Children's Hospital in the Rose Ward and a little recap of what happened yesterday is um, Max was admitted here to have his nasal gastric tube inserted and for us to learn how to feed him with it. And um, so that's what we did all yesterday and last night. I stayed in overnight and Ella went home to look after the, the kids. So this room is very much the same as the one that we stayed in last time. So you've got the doors here, you've got this little area here, we've got a curtain that goes around the cot. Here is Max's cot here. This is a bit different, the monitoring system here. Um, it's just a smaller unit, it doesn't have a display screen, that's where the display screen would normally go. Over on this side, we've got the sink, gloves, everything. 
very handy uh, bed. Over here you've got all the gadgets and that for Max if he needs it. Just some storage here. Just syringes, nappies and everything. Little radio. Got a TV here. Um, we've got a cupboard, some storage. Through here is a toilet and bathroom. So we've got a shower, toilet, sink, and that's it. This thing's here is handy, having a reclining chair. We didn't have this in the last room. Uh, it made our stay here last night very comfortable. So guys, we've just been discharged from the hospital and um, so what happened in the afternoon was things were going at a pretty fast pace. So um, we had doctors coming in and out of the room um, just looking at uh, Max. So fortunately, Max is really well taken care of. He had the general paediatrics doctors in, he had the ENT doctors in, he had the hens nurse in, he had um, our general nurse in. It kept us pretty busy for the rest of the afternoon just trying to figure out what was going to happen when we came home. So because Max wasn't actually sick, we were just in hospitals so they can put his gastro-nasal tube in and teach us how to feed him. They weren't really sure who was signing off on us going home. So the hen's nurse was there and she was pretty happy with us and we were asking her, so do you discharge us or is it um, our nurse or the head nurse at Rosewood or is it General Peds or is it ENT someone? ENT or is it? <laughs> and so all of these guys were sort of collaborating together to see if, if they were all happy with us going home. Mm -hmm. And I think at the end of the day, it was the hen's nurse. Yeah, it was the hen's nurse. Once she was happy with us, um, she you know, told the, uh, the head nurse, yep, yeah, they're good to go. Um, but even then, we were like, no, the head nurse said we can go home. And they were like, oh, did she? And they kind of like went and had to read the notes and check. But from there, we were able to go home. Once they got everything sorted, then they got our discharge papers and we are finally able to bring Max home, which was fantastic. First, though, we had to get the home care stuff, like all the nasogastric tube equipment so the way that works is you go down to um, home equipment and you just say I'm here for Max and um, they gave me an invoice I had to go pay that invoice and then come back and take that stuff home um, fortunately it's capped at $50 a month even though the equipment is more than that sometimes um, we only have to pay $50 a month uh, which is good because the tape alone that tests the pH level of his stomach acids is worth $25. So that was really good because the um, hen's nurse, she organised that for us. So the first package that we get is um, just everything we'll need. And then as we go back in there every month, we'll just top up with like syringes and bits and pieces yeah, of what we're running we should, low on. Yeah. So um, Max is home, um, he's like, we've been able to feed him at home and um, we're pretty confident with what we're doing. I myself has had a lot of practice with feeding Max through the tube. Um, Ellen's still getting a lot of confidence and um, she's, she's getting there with feeding Max and um, you know, this is gonna be something that's just gonna be a part of our everyday life. Mm. So 
Um, in saying that though, I think the first feed they talked me through and the, the head's nurse was in the room. Second feed they were like, do it on your own. And I told Charles, do not talk to me, do not backseat, um, garbage. <laughs> And I did it on my own. And then since coming home, I've done a couple. And I do feel like I can do this. That's great. But the issue is, I guess, doing it with Leo and doing it with Emmy yeah. and juggling that when I'm on my own and home alone. That um, That's going to be the real challenge. Yeah. It's just one more thing that we need to just work into our daily routine. Um, it's, it's not an easy thing to do. Um, in the fact that, you know, when you're breastfeeding or when you're bottle feeding, you can just get up in the middle of the night, warm up a bottle, you can do it like, you know, when it's pitch black and, and feed your baby. Um, this requires, you know... Preparation, a, light. Like. Yeah. After you finish feeding, feeding Max, it's the middle of the night and you're wide awake, so... Mm. Um, that's just something that we're just going to have to get used to. Fingers crossed that everything goes our way and Max won't need the tube for for too much longer. So we were told months by the general paediatrician uh, to just said to expect months. Uh, we spoke to the ENT and at first um, they, they are registrars so they have to check with their consultant. At first he was like, you know what, that sounds pretty good. Um, you know, we're happy to kind of sign you off, but let me go check with um, my boss. And then he came back and said, you know what, after assessing what you've said, I think that maybe we'll do, um, they're going to put a, a camera down his nose and check to see if there's potential vocal cord palsy or any other damage. Really with his situation and the fact that he is a heart kid, he's had surgery and um, it could be developmental, but it also could be physical. So we're happy to rule that out. It won't be a pleasant experience, but just to rule it out, we don't want to be waiting on him to learn the ability to uh, suck, swallow, and breathe. We want to yeah. see if, if we can help him sooner rather than later, that's better. I think more so if it's something that is physical, uh, we want to know sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. um, if it's developmental, then, um, that's something that will support Max in learning how to do. So once a month we'll meet with the hen's nurse and they will um, insert the new tube that needs to be changed every four weeks. And at that appointment, Charles is going to learn how to insert it himself. Because if um, he were to pull it out himself or one of our kids were to pull it out, something like that happens. Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, we can go to the hospital, they'll put it in again. Um, the hens and nurses and that's really quick out of hours we have to wait at the emergency department and with yeah. three kids that's just really not um, yeah depending on how backed up the emergency department is we might be waiting a while so um, it's really not ideal I mean living in the metropolitan um, you know we can just duck down there and, and have that done but if that's something that I could learn how to do myself and I'm confident doing um, putting his tube back in, then um, that's something that I'm all for learning, and you know, I, it's just it's just another way that I can look after Max. Another thing that's just a little bit getting out of control is um, how many appointments we have coming up. So I mean, let me go. Ready? Right. Let me see if I get it. Cardiology, speech pathology, neurological physiotherapist. So I reckon what we should do is we should say how often or when we're oh, okay. up. So, so go. cardiologist. Go. At this point, um, I don't know how frequent that is though. So cardiology at the moment is every two months. Okay, so cardiology every two months. Um, neurological physiotherapist is every two months. Hens appointments, that's every month. There's the nasal gastric tube change, but there's also the hen's clinic, which is a whole different thing, which involves a speech pathologist and a dietitian. General paediatrics, we're not even sure how often, but they want to see us. Yep. Um, ENT, ENT, we're waiting on that appointment to have 
his nose thing changed. Yeah, so they're going to want to see us. They're going to ring us and make an appointment and um, we'll have to see them. I'm sure there was six. Um, respiratory medicine? Uh, respiratory medicine and they will keep an eye on his lung development because there was signs of changes and we need to see if that was just um, the pneumonia yeah. or if there's a uh, permanent change. Is there still speech pathology? Because they... I, I thought, did that. Is that with... Um, oh, did I do that? So you said um, the hands Correct. and then e and speech pathology will Speech happen. pathology will also be checking in on us. Once a month? Once a month. So we're just essentially going to move to North Adelaide and <laughs> <laughs> start rooming in. So we had a lot of appointments coming up and, um, you know, we're just going to be organised for that. And, um, you know, this is only for a little while. Mm -hmm. um, while Max has uh, the tube in, um, that that takes care of half of those appointments, and hopefully this is something that doesn't go for a while, and mm. he'll be able to get past this, and then hopefully in the long run we just work towards just having one appointment with cardiology once a year. The important thing is that he isn't sick. He's got health issues, but he's not unwell. Like, even as it is, I hold him and I can't feel a rattle in his chest, which is something that I have not felt um, ever. Uh, for, as, for as long as I remember, I held him and I felt that rattle. So he's already improving and um, it's only up from here. Yeah. All right, guys, that's the end of the video today. So if you're pregnant, if you're pregnant with twins, if you have twins, if you're a parent of a heart kid, or you're just interested to see what we have going on, look out for the upcoming videos. Better yet, subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you want to donate to Heart Kids, we'll have the link in the description below. Thank you for making it to the end of the video, and we'll see you in the next one. And um, uh, so the home, uh, home, no, and home, enteral, enteral. All right, so nutrition service. <coughs> All right, so I'll I'll say that again, and then you list the doctors that came in. Okay. All right. So guys, the rest of the afternoon moved into free. So guys, the rest of the afternoon moved into free. I don't know. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, but what am I saying? That we'll be doing Yeah. So, <laughs> like, you just jump in and go, so we had...